Who man, what a Valentine's Day I just had. I'm so full of pasta. <laughs> <laughs> I'm out of breath. <laughs> oh, man. I have so many lipstick stains on my collar. I don't know how I'm going to explain this to Melissa. I don't know how I'm going to explain that I used her lipstick to make these marks on my yeah. shirt. I was at the lipstick factory. <laughs> I was at the kissing factory. I was at the lips factory. What do you want to hear? <laughs> I fell into a bucket of lips. I'm sorry. I'm Ed Gein. <laughs> I was at the cheating man convention. What do you want? So uh, with that, this is Candy is Dandy. I'm Daniel Zafrin. I'm Ed Gein. <laughs> <laughs> and we are here to capture you. So uh, I've, I've got a top of the show thing. Top, top of, of the show to you. Does that surprise you? <laughs> Does the, the format of the show surprise you? You don't have a bottom of the show for us? <laughs> the bottom of the show is uh, when I berate you all. Oh, okay. the, okay. the right, 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 right. Got it. With off. notes. I got some notes. <laughs> <laughs> and now my favorite part of the show, after the show, when I give notes. Craig, change your name. <laughs> Okay, so we talked about Halloween apples. Yeah, Halloween apples. Doo-doo-doo. Halloween apples. That's what it is. Up in parts of Canada, when you go trick-or-treating, you don't say trick-or-treat. You say Halloween apples. I'm Doo-doo-doo. saying it. I'm going to be the cool Doo-doo. kid at my school. They're like, oh, I guess you didn't know that, huh? He must be Canadian. <laughs> <laughs> he's dangerous. He's Canadian. <laughs> <laughs> Who's the new kid? I hear he's from Saskatchewan. <laughs> oh, my God. Others say Ottawa. Uh, I don't know, but he's a dream. <laughs> so, Apparently, in St. Louis, you don't say trick or treat. Uh -uh. You don't say Halloween apples. You have to tell a joke when you go door to door on Halloween. You, the trick or treater. You, the trick or treater, have to tell a joke to get candy. Earn it. Like a traditional, like, set up punchline, or or can you, like, monologue it a little bit? (laughs) Can you do, can you be like a John Mulaney? Is this like 90s alt comedy? Yeah. Or, like, could I just do a character? Yeah. Specifically, you have to tell mother-in-law jokes. <laughs> Some people just want to be sexist and uh, think that it's okay to pass, but you won't get candy. I'm more attitude than, yeah. than joke-based. Mine's more of a tone. <laughs> so the, the reason seems to be it's either an offshoot of the Irish immigrants who came to St. Louis, who in Ireland on Sam, however you pronounce Sam, Samhain. Saw whatever, they would go door-to-door singing a song to get a treat, and it somehow evolved into jokes. It's a Pogue song. Oh, but it's an Irish band. <laughs> <laughs> one theory is that it was similar to something that happened in Des Moines during the Depression when kid, like one Halloween kids in Des Moines went so crazy, like 500 arrests were made for kids like going crazy on Halloween that they distract them from causing mayhem. They were required to sing a song or read a poem or do something on Halloween to get candy. So in St. Louis, that a similar thing might have happened and that somehow evolved into telling jokes. So okay. wow. pranks were out, jokes were in to kind of keep kids under control. Yeah. Uh, but in 1971, some teens robbed a bar on Halloween telling <laughs> oh, jokes. Wow. They were like distracting everyone telling jokes and they took $250 when nobody... That, yeah. <laughs> that gives me a really good idea for whatever <laughs> open mic is next for me. <laughs> so uh, three rambunctious teenagers walk into a bar. <laughs> People were like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh-huh, yeah, yeah. And then they uh, ask what the code for the safe is. So what is it? Uh-huh. <laughs> Oh, yeah, uh, it's four, 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 yeah, four. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Managers only. Okay, so that that's a the cool. That's a top of the top, I just, of, the top of the show. I just wanted to tell you something about Halloween. Yeah, we would have done fine. We're very funny, and as we all know, on the playground, being the funny is the best. That's all yeah. that matters. Mm-hmm. Are you the funny one? Then we won't beat you up, and girls kind of like you sometimes, and we'll give you candy. Yeah, and you you might be a little bit more depressed than everybody else, <laughs> but you get candy. You get candy. <laughs> but it's now time for candy. News. Halloween apples. <laughs> Go, these Canadians coming. <laughs> Halloween apples. Coming into my country to take my Sawwain candy. <laughs> and they're coming and saying that. No, you come to America and you say. <laughs> You say January 6th was a fraud. The January 6th committee is a sham of American democracy. That's how you get candy in my America. Democracy is dying. Oh, here you go. Now that's a Canadian I can agree with. Oh, no, Kid Rock is here. We gotta go. Yeah, you're not Kid. You're Kid Rock. But did you hear, I mean, some people say that they landed on Kid Rock. <laughs> oh, no. I thought we made Damn it through it. this. That joke is four <laughs> weeks old. <laughs> oh, bum to the bum to bang. The Kid Rock landed on you. <laughs> so this one, uh, thank, thanks, Canadian little chill child for giving me <laughs> hey, some candy you're welcome, <laughs> so, <laughs> so this one's called Get the Lead In. Mexican candy? Uh, well, <laughs> not just it's not just for Mexican candy anymore. 
<laughs> You're gonna tell me that paint isn't the candy now. <laughs> it's, it's not a sweet. <laughs> well, the pink ones are. <laughs> Pastel paint now candy. <laughs> Guys, it's Easter color. It can't be bad. <laughs> hot new thing. Yeah. So you had said, I think you sent me this this oh, breaking news story. Yes. Oh, you you had to do this during my episode. No. I specifically oh. saved it for this episode. So this is the big talk in the candy world right now. Okay. It's rattled, rattled chocolate lovers oh, all over America. It's been a new study on the presence of heavy metals, lead, <laughs> and cadmium. <laughs> 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 There's too much David Lee Roth in my chocolate. <laughs> Lead and cadmium that were found in several popular chocolate bars as tested by consumer reports. Whoa. So they tested 28 different bars. And while lead and cadmium were present in all of them, that's mm-hmm. just the world we live in, a few were found to be too high. So yep. the maximum allowable dosage, according to California's Office of Environmental Health Hazard Assessment, they're the people like the Prop 65 warning. Yeah. That's them. Like this that's mug will give you cancer. Yeah. Yeah. You're saying that this heavy metal is getting people too high? Yeah, so high, you're Prop 65. <laughs> <laughs> According to them, a safe level is 0.5 micrograms for lead, 4.1 in, for cadmium in what you eat. Mm-hmm. There were several that they tested that were high in one and not the other. Some were high in both of them. These ones were Theo's, 70% dark, Trader Joe's, 85%, Ooh. Theo's, 85 Lily's, 85 and Green and Black's, 70% dark chocolate bars. These ones were high in lead and cadmium. Oh, they were wow. like way over. Trader Joe's had the highest cadmium with over double the amount. Wow. Other brands that failed included Hershey's, Godiva, Tony's, Chocolate Only, Lint, Who, and Dove. The safest ones they tested being certain dark chocolate varieties of Mast, Taza, Valrona, and Ghirardelli. <laughs> Those were some of the safest, safest ones. Why is this happening? The cadmium is absorbed from the soil through the roots of the cacao plant and mm. the lead is blown onto the beans in the air when they're air drying oh them. My God. So basically... The earth is dying. Like yeah, this yeah, isn't yeah. unique to chocolate. And it's also it's in vegetables. The health problems won't occur unless you eat like an entire one of these, like an entire Tony's chocolate only every single day. Which if you're chocolate only enough, you will. <laughs> <laughs> but it's still not great, and it's probably going to get worse the more we pollute the planet. But things can be done in the manufacturing process to reduce this, and we could stop polluting the planet. But we know that's not going to happen. Eh, I'll be dead by then. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah the- Death by chocolate is now a real threat. <laughs> <laughs> it's a reason that kids can't play outside every day of the week now. Uh, oh, sorry. It's death by chocolate out today. <laughs> <laughs> it's too much cadmium in the air. <laughs> it's upsetting, but I mean, as long as you're not going crazy, yeah, you're probably moderation. fine. And that's been candy news. <laughs> Wait a minute. Is there a candy DJ in the audience? <laughs> Whoa. Candy news. Oh my God. Someone lay down some cardboard. <laughs> yeah. I swear to God, if you don't lay down cardboard right now... <laughs> Greg, lay down that cardboard. I'm just doing the Charles Manson dance. I'm doing the word, but I'm just trying to cut myself in half and see if both body parts keep moving. I'm trying to reproduce them myself. I'm doing the worm. Okay, so Beto, and this is shocking to me. I know. You chose a chocolate. Yeah, you, Beto. Why did I do this? <laughs> we both chose chocolate. I guess we're trying to appease this guy. Uh, yeah, the two non-chocolate. Well, I know, yeah. I know. It's What's very, uh, look, yeah. it warms my conversation heart. <laughs> it warms my sweetheart. It warms my cockles. <laughs> but I am shocked. Yeah. You, you know why I chose this? this? I was at Costco. Hell yeah. <laughs> walking down the aisles. Hell yeah. And what do I see? Big old box <laughs> of Ghirardelli chocolates. And I was like, you know what? Let's do it. Let's I could steal it. this. Yeah. <laughs> Put it in my puffy coat. Out. My, my box shape. <laughs> so you chose Ghirardelli. Yes. Ghirardelli. The most, some of the most beautiful factories on the West Coast. I mm-hmm. love, have, have we all been to the Ghirardelli Square? I went when I was a kid. Yeah. It's mm-hmm. so much fun. Yeah. I mean, it, as a tour, as a child tourist and as an adult, but it's like a, <laughs> as an adult, uh, also tourist. It, is not every tourist a small child? Um, yeah. K- kind of true. At heart. But in San At Francisco, <laughs> in your sweethearts, are we not just little children? But in San Francisco, they have Ghirardelli Square, where I guess oh, you'll tell me the factory. And all, but it's like a really cool store. They have one in Hollywood, which I'll get into, but it's not as cool as the one in yeah. San Francisco. I'm glad you brought that up because I don't really get into that part. Okay. Yeah, it, the, it's more like a tourist attraction. Mm-hmm. I don't know if that's where they originally were, but it's just like a cool store. They've got like a soda fountain. It's attached to the El Capitan. It's right across the street from the Well, in Chinese. Hollywood, yeah. Oh, that, yeah, but that one, I'm yeah. talking about the one in 
Uh, well, they're connected by a tunnel that goes <laughs> between underground chocolate river. It's called the Pacific Ocean. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Under the Pacific Ocean, <laughs> they go out to sea and come back to Los Angeles. <laughs> it's the fastest way. <laughs> Let's hear the story of Garadelli. And also how to properly pronounce it. Yeah. You got it right, Ghirardelli. Is it Ghirardelli or Girard? Yeah, I, I went straight to the source okay. because I didn't know myself, and it's Ghirardelli. You, you okay. call the company, they're Ghirardelli. I'm like, got it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for calling Ghirardelli. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I needed. Uh, okay, is your refrigerator running? by? <laughs> <laughs> Might want to catch it. All right. Our story begins in northern Italy. Whoa, in the year again? 1817. Wow. <laughs> Domenico <laughs> Garadelli <laughs> is born in the seaside city of Rapallo. Okay. To his parents, Giuseppe mm-hmm. and Maddalena Garadelli. Beautiful names. It's so funny when you hear like a brand name and to be like, this is the story of John Twix Bar. <laughs> like it, like it, it's so jarring to yeah. hear that yeah. there's people out there named Ghirardelli. <laughs> I know, totally, which is why I like stop calling him Ghirardelli. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. <laughs> Growing up, Domenico was exposed to a wide variety of rich and exotic flavors because his father, Giuseppe, worked as a spice merchant and exotic Ooh, food importer. Okay. Hell yeah. Did he import cadmium? <laughs> Straight from the earth. <laughs> yeah. But to Dominico, there was one flavor that stood out above the rest. Chocolate. Oh. Mm, what is this special oh. thing? <sighs> you can eat this apple or you can have a piece of chocolate. I think I'm going to go for the chocolate. I think I want the Halloween chocolate. Halloween apple. <laughs> Halloween chocolate. <laughs> That's what they say in Italy. <laughs> As a teenager, Dominico's passion for chocolate led him to seek an apprenticeship at Romanego, Italy's oldest artisan confectionery mm. located in the vibrant city of Genoa. Here he committed himself. That's a salami town. Is there a salami? It's a real sausage factory, <laughs> literally. Genoa salami, that's like a big thing. Oh, oh okay. wow, okay. Yeah, Genoa salami. Hell yeah. Oh, Genoa that? <laughs> <laughs> Did you Genoa? <laughs> wow. And that's been my new segment, <laughs> Genoa that. <laughs> that's a joke that should be said out loud. You're getting, you're getting the difference now. <laughs> uh, okay, I'll tear up these, these cue cards. <laughs> Here, he committed himself to learning everything he could about the chocolate and confectionery trade as well as the production of chocolate itself. It's important to note that at this time, chocolate was primarily consumed as a drink. Mm. Again? S- solid, edible chocolate as we know it today did not yet exist. Wow, but right. we'll get into that later. God. Okay. We've had a lot of uh, drinking chocolate in recent yeah. episodes, but also a lot of chocolate, good chocolate, seems to be coming out of northern Italy. Yeah. We've got uh, Nut- Ferrero Rocher, Nutella, and all that. And now... Girardelli. <laughs> in 1838, at the age of 21, Domenico decides it's time to make it on his own, and he sets sail to the Mecca of Melty Goodness, the cocoa capital of the world, <laughs> South America. Oh, Woo! we know it's West Africa. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> the streets are paved with chocolate. After bouncing around the continent and spending some time in Uruguay, Domenico finally settles down in Lima, Peru, where he opens a small confectionery of his own. Ultimately, Dominico would spend about 11 years in Lima, during which time he carved out a humble living for himself, found a wife, and continued to hone his confectionery craft. It's also during this... So he ma- did he marry an Italian or a Peruvian? Uh, he actually married a French woman. What? I don't want to get too deep coming. into it, but this is his second wife. He Uh-oh. marries a French woman who's also living in Lima, whose husband had died because I guess he was an adventurer and he got lost. <laughs> as they die. As yeah. they do, as they as die. They, yeah. <laughs> His wife died back in Italy before oh, okay. he moved oh, over. Okay. But I don't want to get into that. Suspicious. <laughs> <laughs> it was a chocolatey day. Colombo's going to have to figure this one out. Yeah. <laughs> Someone Pikachu? called Detective Pikachu. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's also during this time that Dominico changed his first name to the Spanish equivalent of Domingo. Domingo. Sunday. Domingo Ghirardelli. Mm-hmm. So he's like Sunday chocolate. commonly referred to as Dominico Domingo in quotations. Mm, okay. okay. Yeah. That's his name now. Sounds like he's trying to hide from something yeah. that <laughs> happened in Northern Italy, but okay. <laughs> this tracks. But our newly named hero Domingo was not yet satisfied. There was still <laughs> more to kill again. Yeah, there, to was be still done. More, there was still more wives to kill. Domingo begins to hear rumors of a magical place with rivers that ran yellow. With gold. (laughs) A place where anyone could simply pluck gold nuggets from the ground. Oh, Oh my God. Domingo had to see this place for himself. So, 
with a bad case of gold fever, he packed his bags and <laughs> set sail <laughs> yeah. to sunny California wow. in 1849. Wow, that's the he's time a 49 to come to California. He's a 49er. But that's so weird that like the Spanish are like, I hear South America's paved with gold. And then yeah. there people are in South America, I hear California's <laughs> yeah. paved with gold. Everywhere is just- <laughs> and then people in California, I hear Alaska's <laughs> paved with gold. <laughs> there in Alaska, there's gold in space. <laughs> <laughs> I hear Santa's made of gold. <laughs> but fortune did not favor the bold. And after a the few gold. Oh, <laughs> and after a few months of busts in the gold fields near Jamestown and mm. Sonora, Domingo decided to seek other opportunities and opened a general store in Stockton, California. Ooh, bad move. <laughs> Where Living in Stockton, yeah. bad move. To go from <laughs> Lima, Peru to Stockton, California. <laughs> Where he sold supplies and confections to miners who otherwise lacked the small pleasures of life. Yeah, they, they lacked a lot of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> they lacked the small pleasures of life. They lacked the education of life. They lacked the big pleasures of life. <laughs> Eventually, Domingo opened a second store on the corner of Broadway and Battery in the young burgeoning city of San Francisco. Hell yeah. Is did. that what uh, I, I don't does anyone know the map of San Francisco well enough to know where that is? No, Dash don't have it and it was never <laughs> none of the characters were there. Is it the Fisherman's Wharf? Yeah. <laughs> is it Hate Ashbury? I know that intersection. <laughs> this would become his first establishment in the city. In 1852, building off the success of his previous location, Mr. Garadelli opens another location in Kearney and Washington. Mm. Is that in Washington or is that another intersection? It's another intersection. So Kearney and Washington Street. However, he establishes this location as a dedicated confectionery shop. Oh, the newest one. The newest one. Okay. And it is this location that will eventually become the modern day Garadelli Chocolate Company. Okay. Now now we know the intersection. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Oh, Kearney and Washington. Oh. (laughs) But what about my heart at Kearney (laughs) and Washington? (laughs) But what about the famous chocolate that his namesake is known for? Yeah, what 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 what's he doing here exactly? He's cooking gold. What (laughs) to answer that question, we're gonna have to go back in time. To 1847. Okay. Side note, we all mentioned the year 1847 in our podcast. Oh, that's interesting. In Did our we? episodes. What, what, Big candy oh, year. mine was when I think the Neko company was formed. What was yours? Probably the time they, they figured out the press, mm-hmm. the Dutch press, I think. Yeah. How weird. Something must have been going on. Cooking. And, and, it's, shit was cooking. Shit was cooking in 1847. <laughs> what a time to be alive. <laughs> <What a time laughs> <time. laughs> oh, if only we could go back to 1847. Oh, the cholera. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 1847, Bristol, England. Enter Joseph Fry. Inventor, apothecary, businessman, (laughs) physician, all around cheeky bastard. (laughs) Well, Mr. Fry discovers a method to create solid edible chocolate. Hell yeah, he does. By adding cocoa butter back into processed cocoa instead of water, you get a doughy chocolate paste that can be poured into a mold and cooled, thus creating chocolate bars. Okay, so this is the guy who invented chocolate bars in 1847. In the Bristol, greatest year. Yeah. In Bristol, England. Uh, what, 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 what 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 brand was this? <laughs> uh, he would eventually lay the foundation for Lint. Mm-hmm. Oh, oh, okay. It's interesting. Mr. Fry aptly called his creation chocolate for eating. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I thought it was a suppository. <laughs> well, what the hell have I been doing with it? <laughs> Ironically, at the time, cocoa butter was considered to be a waste product of cocoa powder. Hmm. Yeah, it is a waste. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Fast forward to 1865, mm-hmm. and a Garadelli employee discovers a flavor-enhancing technique that would eventually become widely used throughout the chocolate industry. Expanding upon Joseph Fry's technique, the employee hung a bag of the doughy chocolate paste in a warm room. This allowed more cocoa butter to drip out, leaving behind a chocolate that was even more intense Whoa. in flavor. I so this that. is like distilled chocolate. Yep. And then you use the cocoa butter to moisturize your hands. Yeah, nice and supple. <laughs> he was just rubbing his nipple. <laughs> Greg, I don't know if you saw from your angle. He just rubbed his nipple. Uh-oh. Milk's going to come out if you don't <laughs> chop the milk. Oh, no. Co- come out. Cocoa butter. Cocoa butter keeps coming out. This chocolate could also be processed into a ground chocolate that was better suited for baking. Mm. This is known as the Broma process and is presumably named after the employee who discovered it. 
This new bold flavored chocolate takes off like wildfire and helps establish the foundation of the Ghirardelli empire we know today. So it was like a cooking thing, a cooking ingredient? It was both a dark chocolate for consuming and a cooking. Chocolate for eating, Greg. Chocolate Chocolate for for eating, eating, if you will, (laughs) and a cooking ingredient. Because there's so many Ghirardelli chocolate chips, Mm -hmm, like different different, uh, chocolate powder. They still do that a lot. That seems to be a big part Yeah, and in fact, uh, Ghirardelli is like the number two baking company in America. Behind maybe Nestle Toll House? Probably Nestle, yeah. yeah. And they don't use slave labor. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Thank you, Ghirardelli, for not using slave labor. <laughs> Interesting side note. Broma in Spanish translates to joke or prank. Oh. So let the conspiracy so this theories was a fake begin. This was a fake person. Mm-hmm. I mean, they needed to get candy in St. Louis. So Tell me a Broma. You had two <laughs> Halloween Broma. <laughs> you want candy? I need Broma. <laughs> make me laugh. Please just make me laugh. It's all I have left. It's the scariest night of the year. <laughs> Today, Ghirardelli boasts a huge variety of chocolate products, including their famous chocolate squares, mm-hmm, which, mm-hmm. believe it or not, were not introduced until 1999. Oh, my What? God. That is a new product my friend I not that everybody that. loves i feel like okay because i i I'm in and out of san francisco as a child <laughs> i mean oh God, i don't want to brag yeah i found gold <laughs> so the the area in front of where the Ghirardelli store in San Francisco is, uh-huh. is called Ghirardelli Square. Yeah. And they have these candies that are called Ghirardelli Squares. Are they called Ghirardelli Squares? They're squares, yeah. They're squares at least. No, no, they're called the squares. They're called Ghirardelli yeah. Squares. Mm-hmm. So like what happened here? What, what, if this, in, I feel like pre-1999, I was going to the Ghirardelli store and getting squares of chocolate. What was I getting then? You were just getting chocolate in the shape of a square. They, oh, but they right. Didn't, this, they didn't, as we know it, didn't... The single package thing the was singularity. not a thing. Yeah. Yeah. But mm-hmm. if you went to the thing, they would probably give you a big chunk of it in, yeah. Yeah, like you're saying, a shape. In a squared yeah. shape. Well, when did they start... Oh, can I get a hexagon? <laughs> get out of <laughs> The Ghirardelli pentagram. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but when did they start calling the area in front of the store the Ghirardelli square? Well, it feels like a town square is a lot... You know, like. Yeah, it's just a weird sort of thing of, of like which came first and like what is named after like is this a tribute to the chocolate yeah. or is the chocolate a tribute to the square the chocolate's a tribute to it's got to be a tribute to the square i'm gonna say that it feels more right be it feels tribute. right it feels right it's gotta be right thankfully i keep all my sources oh uh, locked away they could learn a lot from him <laughs> i delete them <laughs> so that nobody can trace them back to me i report all the websites i use as spam <laughs> yeah. so that i have the only information <laughs> 1962 two prominent san franciscans acquire garadelli square and commission an architect to construct a modern specialty shop center while retaining the exceptional Victorian qualities of the complex. Wow. Okay, so they are, the candies are a tribute to that square. That makes sense. 1965, San Francisco declares Ghirardelli Square an official city landmark. That's so weird. That it also that it took them thirty four years to be like, wait a minute, he was just a dude making chocolate, yeah. <laughs> aren't we all? <laughs> so that's that's my story. So but I do have a little. Did you know? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the Ghirardelli store, like we were talking about, it's a really fun place. I went because what we're trying today. What are the flavors we have today? Today we are trying intense dark. 60 percent cacao. That's not cacao. that intense. No, I yeah, I've had, it's more than half. It, it is more than half. <laughs> <laughs> Those night classes are working. <laughs> Hang on. Can you Google that too? Uh, we also have dark chocolate sea salt caramel. Luscious mm. filling. Luscious filling. filling. That's, I feel like that's going to win. Yeah. Then we have milk chocolate caramel. I feel like that's going to win. Also luscious. Then we have good old fashioned milk chocolate. I feel like that one's going to win. I guess I guess dark <laughs> chocolate is more old fashioned. And then we have dark chocolate Mint. That one's my favorite. Oh, with luscious filling. I didn't realize there's a filling in this. <laughs> oh, good. They Ooh. put luscious filling in this. This one. one's going to be the best. The the coloring <laughs> is, it goes like bright red, a nice blue, a uh, gold, a dark blue, a nice like emerald green. Yeah. Like these colors are shiny. They're yeah. really Beautiful. nice. So you had the first four you had, because that's kind of like the standard thing, apparently. Like those are their classic. But I really like the dark chocolate mint. So I went to the Ghirardelli store in Hollywood. Yeah. Beautiful Hollywood, California. Yeah. And I 
it was exorbitantly expensive, so I right. didn't bother with it. But there's a few because they have like bulk bins. There's a few other flavors, but honestly, not that many. Like they had like a raspberry maybe and like a strawberry maybe. But these ones, the first four definitely, and the fifth one, like these are like the standard Ghirardelli yeah, flavors. These are the heavy hitters. Yeah, the store's really fun. They have like a soda fountain, the the bulk bins. Yeah. It's expensive as hell. Yeah. It, it's it, and these candies are kind of this is top tier chocolate. There, it, oh yeah, it yeah. is, but it, it's it's like Ferrero Rocher level, where mm-hmm. it's like it's more expensive than Ferrero Rocher. Mm-hmm, yeah. Definitely, uh, it's a good quality, but it also is kind of everywhere. Also, yeah, it, I like Ferrero Rocher makes a point to be accessible. Yeah, you know, it does. It it looks elevated, but mm-hmm. it wants to appeal to the common man, and the common man can afford it. Yeah. Garadelli kind of brands itself as a luxury yeah. item. And, it and if it's too expensive, itself, uh, yeah. hey, that's not my problem. <laughs> you pleb. <laughs> <laughs> if it's too expensive, then you can go to the Hershey store. <laughs> it is kind of expensive. We'll talk about the prices later, but it is a little bit expensive. Yeah. So should we get into it? Yeah. Let's do it. All right. So the first one we're doing mm-hmm. is 60%, that's over half, cacao <laughs> intense, <Prove> <laughs> intense dark Chocolate, beautiful red, wait. shiny. The colors are so nice yeah, on the packaging, really are. and this square is the perfect size. It yeah, kind of is. I agree. Is it just me, or is this one smaller than the other ones? Or maybe it's just the package is smaller. Yeah, the the blue does not hold its own against these other colors. Yeah, it's Ooh. kind of weird. They've got the big Ghirardelli eagle on the yeah. right oh, in the yeah. middle of the square. Yeah, what's with the eagle? Is this some sort of like Nazi thing or what? Um, no, it's an Italian eagle. <laughs> oh, it's a yeah. it's a it's Mussolini a Mussolini eagle. Yeah. <laughs> I'd have to look into that. I'm not sure. Okay, let's smell this. Yeah. Ooh, that oh, smells really yeah. good. Really good. That's a great smell. Oh, and beautiful. they're so it's so shiny and smooth. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Just like the packaging does, it has like a gloss finish on it. Yep. Nice. That rugged edge that Flake has, you know? <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> it's not as rugged. Manly. Yeah, th- this was designed not by accident. A little more refined. <laughs> it is refined. It and it's got kind of that that sort of like new money San Francisco mm-hmm. from like the Post gold rush, like the unsinkable Molly Brown. Are you eating it already, Greg? Yeah. <laughs> it's really good. All right, let's totally. eat it. Oh, it smells so good. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Crispy. Has a little bit of a little bitterness. Mm-hmm. That's because it's over half. You're right. This is a perfect amount. Anything more like a bar would have mm-hmm. been too much of this, but this is a good amount. Melts. One of my favorite parts of Ghirardelli Squares is the snap to yeah. them. The, yeah. Mm-hmm. It's like a, a cased hot dog almost. Like it has the perfect sort of snap yeah. and then it breaks off into nice shards. It's not messy or anything. No. It's got the snap, but the chocolate also melts once it softens. Once it, mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. Saliva. Yeah. You get the best of both worlds. You get your, your snap and then you get your creamy. Yeah, the creamy. Oh, this is really oh and creamy. it's so creamy. It's more than half creamy. It, <laughs> that's a fine piece of chocolate. Yeah. I'm going to eat the whole thing. No, this is a, yeah. Delicious. The next two we have are car- both caramels. Mm-hmm. As you know, I'm not a huge caramel fan in mm. general, but the caramel inside of these is so gooey yeah. and thin. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I-, I really do like it. Like it's not overwhelming caramel. It's still predominantly chocolate, which is what I like. I It actually took me by surprise how like thin and gooey it was. Mm-hmm. I was like not ready for that. Yeah. It's not like a, like a Snickers bar where it's like like yep, you're yeah. stretchy pulling it mm-hmm. out Kinda of your mouth like yeah this is almost liquid oh yeah mm-hmm. so what it, this is the dark this is chocolate the dark chocolate sea salt caramel i, I, I don't know i potato breaded because that flavor mm-hmm. was so yeah. intense i, I just want chocolate in my mouth okay so this one's the lighter blue careful when you bite this one in half might be okay. messy <laughs> 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 careful listener first few rows may get wet <laughs> It smells mm. more milk chocolatey. Yeah, it it's does. thicker because it has to hold the uh, mm-hmm. caramel. Yeah. Mm. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. That saltiness. The saltiness is a big sale. Mm-hmm. It is a lighter dark chocolate. It's a lighter dark chocolate, and the you really taste the sea salt. Yes, it comes through. Like it almost tastes like. Well, there is. It just tastes like there's salt in it. Which normally would be gross, but it's since Mm-mm. the chocolate is so sweet, mm-hmm. it, it really is a good balance. And you still get that snap. You still get the snap, mm-hmm. and then it melts in your mouth. God, even this caramel has like a sheen to it. Oh, man. This is a classy caramel. This isn't your your, your trashy. No, this ain't Rolos, people. This ain't Rolos, mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. This is a nice. Even though I love Rolos. <laughs> <laughs> Don't let Rolos know I said that about I'm them. so sorry I said that, Rolos. <laughs> Sometimes you just want junky caramel. Yeah. Sometimes you do, but this is like the elevated version of caramel. Yeah. Really sticky, kind of sticks on mm-hmm. your lip if you miss the target. I'm always missing the target <laughs> when I'm eating food. All right. 
Next, we have milk chocolate caramel. So I'm assuming that this one, obviously it'll be less salty and also less uh, intense. Like this is, I feel like this is going to be very sweet. Yeah, I'm expecting sweet, a sweet super overload. Super creamy, like creamy to the max. Mm-hmm. And this one again is thick. This one comes in the like golden yeah. sort of brownish yeah. package. Beautiful golden. Doesn't smell as intense. No, it doesn't. Which is kind of a downside, but maybe. Oh yeah, the smell. A little sweetness. You can kind of smell the caramel more mm-hmm. through rather than the chocolate. Let's try this. A little less crispy. Yeah. A little less. Mm-hmm. But damn, that's creamy. It's very creamy. I kind of want the dark chocolate of the last one with the caramel of this one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I want a non-salted. Yeah. The dark. salted was maybe a little too much, although it worked. I think I like that one the best so far, the salted caramel. Yeah. Well, you haven't had the mint yet. I haven't had the mint yet. <laughs> These two tastes are too close to each other. The other one, the sea salt and dark chocolate, mm-hmm. there's a big gap in between them, so they almost complemented each other. But this one, I can't distinguish the almost the caramel taste from the chocolate taste. Maybe we should have done the dark chocolate in between these Maybe. two. It's mostly just in the caramel. Mm-hmm. The caramel dominates. Mm-hmm. Yeah. This might be the first episode we've done where I've eaten all of the things, like not just a bite of everything we've tried. Like I'm eating all, every. I just ate three squares of Ghirardelli chocolate. This is a good episode. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just say what all the listeners are thinking. And this is maybe the best one we've run yet. <laughs> Let's, hang on. Let's put out a press release before this one. This is a quote, good episode. Four O's. <laughs> good. All right. Next we have the original. Well, I don't know if it's the original, but probably the most ubiquitous. I tend to think that the milk chocolate version of things are the original. Yeah. Because it's like standard. Mm-hmm. If not, maybe the best. I think this has the nicest color wrapper. Oh, yeah. it's a beautiful. It's like a midnight blue, yeah. Yeah. shiny. It's very nice. Mm-hmm. Okay, so classic milk chocolate, the regular one. Yeah, thinner than the last two. Yeah, because it's it's not hiding something inside. <laughs> Glossy, beautiful, light brown color. Smells. Um, it smells like milk chocolate. Yeah, yeah. not as strong as the dark ones. Yeah. But chocolate ear. It's also interesting to note that all the chocolates have the logo yeah, stamped, stamped on them. On them. Mm-hmm. Beautifully too. Flawlessly. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Not like a sweetheart. I know. Come on. They need to get some tips from Ghirardelli. Make chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> this one's very good, but a little mild. Compared, yeah. Compared to the ones we just mm-hmm. had, like especially the pure dark one, it's a much less intense flavor. It's still really good. I kind of like that, though. Mm -hmm. I was going to say, it's not overly sweet and loaded with sugar like most milk chocolates are. This is true. a good chocolate to kind of not think and throw a $19 (laughs) candy bar in your mouth. Just eat like 400% of your daily value of cadmium Mm -hmm. with. Just Mm -hmm. keep eating them. This is good lead. (laughs) (laughs) I'm also getting very warm, earthy notes in it. Yeah. That's the cadmium. Oh, yeah. Am I a superhero now? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you've got to Captain America. <laughs> Cadmium America. <laughs> hey, combine me with the Cadmium and then we got... <laughs> you got an Ameri- you're just an American. <laughs> but his heart rate is twice as strong as everybody else's. <laughs> Civvy American. <laughs> Comparing this, just that chocolate, to a flake bar from... God, so long ago, of just like chocolate flavor. I yeah. feel like the flake flavor was a lot more intense mm-hmm. uh, what? Of, of a plain chocolate. Oh, okay. of the, of a plain of chocolate. Just the plain the chocolate, plain chocolate. Just the one we just ate. Mm-hmm. The Cadbury flake one was, yeah, a more in your face sort of plain chocolate. This was much smoother, less noticeable of a chocolate to me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It was good, but not my favorite of the ones we've had so far. You it's know, a kick in the face. We forgot to do, did you know? Give me some. Did- yeah. I'm gonna, yeah, yeah, I'm gonna yeah. just lay it on. Also, you. put one. Did you know? A? Oh, <laughs> did you know? A? Did you know? A? <laughs> Let me give you three of them, and then I'll save the last one for after mm-hmm. we eat the mint. All right. See if I knew this. <laughs> yeah, I think Daniel knows this one. He's really smart. <laughs> <laughs> if it's about San Francisco, it has to be either about Ghirardelli Square, Fisherman's Wharf, Hate Ashbury, and Bullet, and I'll know the answer. <laughs> All right. Did you know? That while the great San Francisco earthquake and fire of 1906 destroyed much of the city, the Ghirardelli plant was not damaged, oh and manufacturing operations resumed within 10 days wow. after the disaster. Wow. wow. Heroes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I mean, essential workers. <laughs> the whole city burned down. I need chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> and we won't give you hazard pay. <laughs> I kind of already uh, spoiled this one, but did you know? 
that in 1998, Lint Chocolates acquired the Ghirardelli Chocolate Company. I oh, did not know that. Interesting. Oh, wow. Lint is another very high elevated because Lint also has stores some places similar to the Ghirardelli store where it's like bulk bins of the like Lint balls yeah. of like every possible variety, which is what the Ghirardelli store was for the squares. Mm -hmm. Which they they've really embraced the squares since they, only being around since 19. Like the bars are like I don't think I've ever had a Ghirardelli bar. No, no I don't think so either. It, it's all squares. It's all squares. And they don't even sell the that many. It's all, I mean, I eat what I am, a square. <laughs> but Ghirardelli, come on, you're cool. <laughs> Did you know that Ghirardelli is the oldest continuously run chocolate factory <gasps> in the United States? Oh, my oh. God. <laughs> Boom! <laughs> <laughs> Older than Tony's Chocolonely? Lonely? <laughs> <laughs> no, because depression is way older. <laughs> That's interesting. Officially established in San Francisco in 1852. Yeah. To the naysayers, Hershey was established in 1894. Get out of here, Hershey's. No one God, likes that's you. That's like 40 years. Uh, I'll do the math on that. That's yeah. like 40 years later. This makes that's like half. Guaranteed. <laughs> <laughs> He's really good at identifying halves, above or below halves. <laughs> we got, we, I'm so glad that the, our Patreon funded his half class. <laughs> That's why we're renaming this show Two and a Half Men, <laughs> because Greg is obsessed with halves now. This makes Ghirardelli over 170 years wow. old. Yeah, that, that adds up. Like, it feels like, because uh, even the, when you look at the logo, like, it looks yeah, old. Like, the does. font is classic. The eagle, I mean, that's an old ass animal. That's, yeah. <laughs> it's a dinosaur. Do we, do we still have those? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, not if I have anything to say about it. <laughs> yeah, it feels old. It feels elegant. It feels, like I was saying, like that sort of new money San Francisco, mm -hmm. like an old Victorian house. Yeah. It very much feels like that. But now we've got the final one mm. that I was insisting, because this one is my favorite one yeah uh, um, yes greg how much how much am i eating you're eating oh my above or below or exactly you are eating exactly half of a mint garadelli i'm going home now yeah, <laughs> yeah. i just came here to say that yeah. Man. Man. <laughs> to haves and have not go ahead <laughs> That's the name of his class. <laughs> <laughs> but the, so, okay, so you brought those ones, but I wanted to make sure we had these. So I went to the Ghirardelli score. It was crazy expensive. So I got a, a premium chocolate assortment bag that only had three of the mint ones in it because wow. I don't know if they're less popular or more cherished. I don't yeah. know. And they don't want to give them out too much, but I wanted to save one for the autopsy, which will be on our YouTube and our Instagram. <laughs> yeah. But um, me and Greg are sharing a half of one. Yeah, as lovers do. It's a, <laughs> it's a beautiful, Beautiful emerald green. Mm -hmm. Mm. Smells minty. Smells very minty. I can brush my teeth with this. Yeah, uh, you, yeah. You mentioned where you got yours. I got mine at uh, Costco, and it came in like a larger of their bags. Yeah, uh -huh. and it yeah. was about like twenty of them were in there. Okay, and I guess they their intention was to give you like five of each. Oh right. But I had way more of the dark chocolate salted caramels mm. than yeah, the other I, flavors. Uh, this one I think had more of the. Whatever the gold one was, yeah. Oh, right. oh, that's I think that's the regular, milk regular. Milk no, caramel. that's caramel milk chocolate. And I paid about like fifteen bucks for the bag. Okay. At the Ghirardelli store, it would have been five dollars for four squares. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I I threw their soda fountain on the floor in rage, and I yeah. left, and I got yeah. this bag of premium assortment that has like twelve in it or nine or ten for it was like six dollars. Yeah. So okay. start converting your dollars into Ghirardelli squares. <laughs> yeah. It's the next. This is the new currency. <laughs> <laughs> Bitcoin is failing. Ghirardelli is up. <laughs> oh, hey, wait, hang on. Uh, breaking candy news. <laughs> They're renaming <laughs> FTX Arena Ghirardelli Square. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> They're putting corners on the arena now? <laughs> so it's a square? <laughs> They're just like foam corners. <laughs> and all of the basketball question mark that is played there is now hard <laughs> okay so all right going in i have to open it mine. smells very minty i like this one because it's it's got almost like a junior mint yeah. uh, gooiness oh, of yeah. mint in it without feeling like you're eating a bug i wonder who had it first <laughs> it's a good probably ghirardelli smells really good minty very mm -hmm. minty chocolatey oh yeah it's kind of like hitting my nose and uh -huh. i haven't even eaten it going in Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm, crispy. Oh, intense mint. Mm -hmm. Senior mint. <laughs> it's the same, maybe a little thicker texture than the caramel was. Yeah. Yeah. But oof, that's good. Wow, that is fresh. Yeah. Fresh is a great way to describe yeah. it because yeah. the chocolate 
Yeah, that's really good. It's a dark chocolate. It is. And it does not overwhelm. The mint is the main player. Yeah, yeah but the chocolate works so well with mm-hmm. it because it adds a whole new flavor to just being mint. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I really, I really like that one. I'm glad I stupidly went to Hollywood and tried to find parking for half an hour to not buy them there. <laughs> I let it settle in my mouth and I'm kind of getting like a berryness. Oh, wow. You know, if I had more, wow. but Greg ate half of mine, so I can't that's, point That's out. really good. Or maybe like a dark cherry, something. This one and the sea salt one have a very complex flavor. Yeah. Like they're very mature candy. Like mm-hmm. Greg yeah. said, senior mint. Yeah, senior mint. Yeah. <laughs> it's a lot going on there. Yeah, it's a lot. It's very, it's beautiful. Yeah, it was delicious. Beautiful <laughs> it was piece beautiful. of chocolate. <laughs> that was a beautiful experience we just shared. <laughs> you have some more uh, Diginoas for me? I do. I got one more heavy hitter for you guys. Oh my God. This one might change your perspective. Oh <laughs> they're all made of bugs and bows. <laughs> <laughs> Did you know? <laughs> <laughs> Did you know that in the 1920s, Ghirardelli also produced and sold mustard? <laughs> <laughs> At the time, oh the company God. was actually the only mustard manufacturer west of the Mississippi. Wow. wow. It sold mustard under the Ghirardelli brand and also made all the mustard sold under the Schilling brand. Wow. Yes, okay. the spice brand. Okay. That's interesting. Did they come in squares? Did they make gas too? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Yes, Greg. <laughs> I wonder if their mustard is, uh, did they have like sea salt in it or was it a more of a minty mustard? Caramel mustard. <laughs> I tried to find pictures online and I couldn't. Of mustard. Oh, yeah, of no. Ghirardelli mustard. <laughs> I mean, there's so many, like they have like Ghirardelli hot fudge sundae mm-hmm. sauce. I a lot would, of baking stuff. I don't think I would buy Ghirardelli mustard. Unless they told me to put it on ice cream, then I would. You're west of the Mississippi and you need mustard. <laughs> <laughs> what are you going to do? I tend to be in that situation, yeah. Hi, are you west of the Mississippi and need mustard? <laughs> like, at, at what point did they stop? And also, yeah. why? <laughs> it must have been like... Pre-World War II, yeah. they stopped. Yeah, yeah well, they stopped all German stuff for a while. Mustard gas and all that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah too soon, Garadelli. Too, too soon, yeah. <laughs> Welcome back. We have mustard. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my nostalgia. <laughs> uh, okay, so let's write down our... One, two, five, cavi- or zero to zero five. Zero to five cavities, five being the highest. Let's write down. But I hazard to say strongest showing of, oh. of episode like every single one was good yeah. and i don't i can't think of another thing where we tried multiples where that was the case yeah probably candy corn <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yep. oh i forgot about sweethearts <laughs> hey, hey, hey 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 how dare you sweethearts not sweet tarts <laughs> i was slamming myself <laughs> the best iteration of sweethearts is the sweet tart hearts <laughs> we'll find out in 2024 <laughs> okay let me think about this are we doing as a whole or individuals? Uh, we'll do as a whole and then say your favorite. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. I know. This one was a hard one for me too. It's really hard because it's so good, but I would never say that this is like my favorite candy, which my no, scores I wouldn't do that either. were leaning towards. Mm-hmm. Like it was leaning towards like greatest of all. T- but I can't, like I would never say that Ghirardelli is my favorite candy. In a bubble, man. Just do it in a bubble. I'll do it in a, I'll do anything in a bubble. <laughs> <laughs> Get me in a bubble. <laughs> yeah, that's the Daniel guarantee. I was afraid of that too, but I'm just going for it. Well, are we all locked in? Yeah. All right. Who wants to go first? I'll go first. I get a 4.5. Yeah. It's really strong. Each one is yeah. delicious. It's the perfect size. It's the Guys, perfect size. They're all squares. <laughs> <laughs> How am I sending that? Wait a minute. Would you say this is better or worse than half of the candy in the world? <laughs> well, I had four. I could have had two. Um, <laughs> he lives in life by in half measure. Yes. <laughs> I'd probably say for some reason, probably milk chocolate or mint was my favorite. Milk chocolate just because it's like a regular I know taste. I'd say mint because it's the best one. But. I think the only thing keeping it from a five is probably the price. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, that, yeah. That's what's going to probably keep me from making it like an everyday consumption. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But oh, you yeah. brought up a great point that it takes, because there's so many candies we've had where we've said, oh, a smaller size would be better. They already have taken care of that for us. That yeah. the only, I mean, I guess there's the bars, but they don't quite do these flavors in the bars. The bars are kind of just like... Uh, the baking chocolate. Yeah, or like the, 80% yeah. or just... But like they've already taken that one wet, size element. Yeah, they, they read our minds. They, yes. They've read our minds. Yeah. Much like I was trying to think, I was trying to think of a famous San Francisco mind reader, but there's there's so <laughs> many. Very specific. Zoltar. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Much like the Zoltar on the Fisherman's Pier, it has read our mind. I'll go. Okay. Save you for last. All right. Uh, everything we've already said, it's all so good. Yeah. I was going to say 4.5. 
That was my first thought, but I just because why Daniel? Because it's so good. Like everything I had was so good, but I thought like I think that's more or as much as I gave like Junior Mints or Three Musketeers, which were professed to be two of my favorite ones on this yeah. show. Yeah, it's okay to ha- it's okay to evolve as a person, Daniel. <laughs> N- I disagree. <laughs> I'm something of a macho man, and I don't I don't buy into that philosophy. But I bumped it down a little bit just because I can't in good conscience say this is my one of my favorite candies. Yeah. So I gave it a 4.3 okay. Okay. instead of 4.5. Wow. Well, they're they're not as accessible and they're not as common. So like you just grow up eating the stuff that you <laughs> they love. They just sort of appear. Yeah, they just they were never a part of my childhood. So there's that, that element. This is another, much like Ferrero Rocher, that kind of appears around the holiday time yeah. for me. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. They're like gift candy. Totally. They're gift candies, candies in the break room at work. Yeah. I got the peppermint bark one. Oh peppermint yeah. Bark which one, is really good. Which was on discount. They had like a peppermint yeah. bark and like, like a, a snowman shaped snowman one. And, they, and like a gingerbread flavor uh-huh. they had on discount. Yeah. But discount it was still, it was only like $40 <laughs> on discount. Yeah. It was actually, Greg, 50% off. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can't, I'm just saying I can buy it now. Yeah. You can totally <laughs> buy things yeah. at 50% off. <laughs> this was delicious. Mm-hmm. Uh, thoroughly impressed. Strong. Oh, uh, Back to back bangers. Mm-hmm. Like, what candy is this consistently good? And not only that, but all distinct tastes. Oh yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. We can bite it and be like, oh, I know. except for the two caramels were a little similar, but pretty. I didn't get to. I didn't say my favorite mint. mint. Oh, thank you. The mint, mint one. Is mint my was favorite. Favorite. I figured this is like the antithesis. <laughs> you went out and read about it. Yeah, <laughs> of sweethearts where they had back to back L's. Yeah. This is back to back W. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yes. This is these candies are undefeated. These chocolates are undefeated. I was kind of in their pickle where I was like, this is not my favorite candy of all time, but I don't hesitate to call this my favorite chocolate of all time See, as good. of now. Yeah, that's really good. Uh, this is like really quality That's an interesting chocolate. question to think about because mm-hmm. there's a difference between what's the what's the best chocolate, what's your favorite candy, which for me would be chocolate. But yeah. like, Yeah, and I'm a chocolate newbie, so obviously <laughs> there's a lot of chocolate to be tasted, yeah. but this as it stands right now is totally my favorite chocolate. It's yeah. very good. That's a good chocolate to have to be your favorite. It's yeah. perfect size. It's delicious. I give it a 4.25. Okay, so we're all about the same. Yeah. yeah. God, we, we've we are. Been, just like this chocolate, we're consistent. <laughs> <laughs> just like this chocolate, I've got sea salt inside of me. <laughs> just like this chocolate, if you drive down to Hollywood Boulevard on a Friday night, you'll probably find it. <laughs> uh, yeah, really strong across the board. Yeah. yeah. It's just really good. Well, we tried five different ones and not a single one was bad. Yeah. No, they were all, all great really good yeah. mm-hmm. and in fact it made you want to try more of them because like yeah. I want to try the caramel without the sea salt we'll yeah. do a variety version where we try all the other yeah. ones and it's oh, going to yeah. be really expensive <laughs> yeah. we're going to need your help yeah. so go over to our Patreon <laughs> there's a special Ghirardelli fund <laughs> yeah. in the Patreon yeah, we have a Kickstarter going right now uh, <laughs> all the flavors yeah. please <laughs> would you be excited, excited to yeah. get this on Halloween Yeah. oh yeah oh yeah, yeah 100% never would yeah never seen it does it exist as a Halloween candy? I mean, this is the, already the perfect yeah, it kind is. Of Halloween yeah. Ghirardelli. Yeah. <laughs> That's what we, we need to go to Canada and yeah. straighten things out over there. That's what they say in San Francisco. Yeah. <laughs> and then uh, the people within the house are like, you know how expensive it is? Yeah. <laughs> We're at the full house house knocking. Yeah. <laughs> Halloween Ghirardelli. What are they saying? <laughs> what are they what saying? Are they saying? <laughs> <laughs> is this a Zodiac thing? <laughs> um, but uh, it's already the perfect size. Yeah, yeah, it is. It is. If it were not so expensive, people would give this yes. out on Halloween. Halloween. Yeah. And if they did, I would be thrilled. Any flavor, I would be thrilled. Oh, this. yeah. This is great stuff. What about you? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I would, it would be incredibly surprised. Yeah. I would think this, 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 <laughs> yeah. this is the mayor's house or what? Who is this? Another <laughs> famous mind reader from San Francisco? <laughs> There's so many. I can't even choose. Who is this? Dirty Harry's house? Yeah. <laughs> Who is this? The Nightmare Alley guy? I don't remember. God, I only <laughs> see half that movie. Um, Yeah. Yeah. I'd be absolutely excited to get this on. Uh, it's more of a- Go ahead. Halloween apple. <laughs> 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 Go on. Yeah. It's, it's never going to happen probably. But yeah, I'd be very excited to get this for free from somebody. On any day of the Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Any day of the year. Yeah, any day of the year. What about you? Oh, 100%. Yeah. Yep. Would love. This is just a bulletproof candy. Yeah. Like, there's yeah. nothing, there's no situation you wouldn't be happy eating this in, unless it was like, if you eat chocolate, you're going to die. I would. I'd be pretty happy with that. I would not trade these two for anything. Maybe like a full size, maybe like a full size nerd rope. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. But hey, no, nah, I would. with these nerd ropes. I would hold on to these. And Did you say what your favorite ones were? Oh, oh no, I didn't. I think my it was kind of between the mint and the sea salt. 
Uh, the dark caramel, one, or the, the dark. dark, dark yeah, one, me yeah. too. I think uh, if it didn't have the sea salt, it would win. But I'm gonna give it to the mint. The okay. mint was the best. Had you had the mint before? Ah, uh, you m- must have. Maybe, but it, it's been a while. They maybe it's because they're so apparently rare. As I found out trying to find them on Hollywood, yeah. going around shaking down people dressed like Elmo. Captain Jack Sparrow yeah. and Elmo. Where's the dark chocolate mint? <laughs> they're hard to find. Maybe that's why I liked it so much. But they're like they were always when I would be picking through a bowl of them, I'd yeah. look for the dark chocolate yeah. mint. And I, as we know from previous episodes, I'd never been like 100 percent sold on the mint chocolate, but this yeah. did it today. I yeah. think this did it today. Of all the mint chocolate things we've had, you have enjoyed. I have enjoyed them, but. But in, in my mind, I still, there's this block. <laughs> well, I think you should go down to Hate and Ashbury and uh, <laughs> unlock your mind a little bit. Because <laughs> there's a Ben and Jerry's there and they do a really good uh, mint chocolate. Ooh. Okay, so now we've uh, we've got a game. Woo-hoo. Okay, so this one was another one we prepared in advance. Yes. This one's called Top Five. Top Five. So this time we are going to rank our top five movie candies, Boy. which we prepared in advance. Let's go from yeah, five yeah, to yeah. one. Yeah, yeah, prepared okay. in advance. Let's all say our fives. Let's all say our fours okay. uh, at once so nobody can hear. <laughs> so our top five movie candies. And my answers might surprise uh, some of you. Like the top two or three were pretty clear cut for me. Mm-hmm. But the bottom two were a little, uh, I had to stretch a little bit to think of what I really like. But my number five, yeah. snow caps. Mm. Weird. Yeah. Is that another mint one? No, 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 like the non pareils, like it's just like a piece of chocolate with little, with little white things, on, things yeah. on it, like little snowflakes, which is what non pareil means in French. I honestly have never had those. Not the same. I haven't means had them not for... the same, which is how you say snowflake. There's snowflakes. No, oh, you've never same. had them? No. What is what is the white part supposed to be? It's just like a sprinkle base. It's like a crunch. It's oh, like, so it's, it's a crunchy chocolate. It's, a crun- it's good. They're maybe a little too. We'll do it. We'll do it soon. They're maybe a, li- a little too sweet because of the sprinkles, but yeah. I, I like the crunchiness of them. Okay. We're doing our least, our number yeah, five. Right? five. This is number right, five. Yeah, yeah. My number five, Mike and Ike's. Ew. Yeah. Ew, you both like Mike and Ike's? I like Mike yeah, and they're Ike's. fruity, they're small, mm-hmm. they taste, they feel like uh, you're taking a bunch of pills. <laughs> Marilyn Monroe at the theater. <laughs> I love it. I eat Mike and Ike's and I watch Blonde and I feel great. <laughs> I do not like Mike and Ike's you don't at like, all. Uh, have you tried? You're prejudiced. You need to grow like up. the varieties? I don't like Mike. I don't like Ike. <laughs> uh, no, I haven't. But just like they're they're the ones if I'm if I'm getting it right they're just like a pill of, yeah pill yeah. chewy pill kind of like uh, the weird cousin to a jelly bean yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. they couldn't get it right <laughs> <laughs> couldn't get it act together they're yeah a little more chewy yeah they're chewy know. they're blast of fruit they're delicious yeah. I remember them getting stuck in my teeth a lot yes they are guilty of that yeah oh, Mike mm-hmm. I'm cool with that I, I'm okay with Ike uh, number five peanut M and M wow that is low yeah, that yeah is I'm not low. a chocolate boy but it made the list but so. everyone makes an Okay, it did make the list. Add it with your popcorn. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Mm-hmm. I was about to say, yeah. I've yet to try that. It's freaking delicious. And the chocolate maintains itself because of the hard shell. Yeah. It doesn't melt in your popcorn. <laughs> okay, so number four, I've got Junior Mints okay. as number four. Dang. Okay. As we've discussed in that episode, a perfect, yeah, a you perfect. Love those. I'm surprised it's not higher. What the heck? Uh, I've got things that I really like in a movie okay, theater coming all right, up. All right. What about you? Goobers. Ooh. Chocolate yeah, covered are peanuts. Are those like whoppers? No, they're like chocolate covered peanuts. They're they're not like they are just chocolate yeah. covered peanuts. Oh, okay. Yeah, they're delicious. Small bites. They're, those are good, but they kind of get a little boring for me. I'm fine. I'm boring. I'm. <laughs> <laughs> I watch boring movies. I'm boring. It's great. <laughs> what about Number you? four, Mike and Ike. Mike and Ike. Uh, you two are. I like the original more than Tropical, though. Yeah, me too. There's a flavor in Tropical that is disgusting, <laughs> and I don't know which one it is. Uh, that's the Ike. I, yeah. I tend to not like Tropical candy, but I do- The sour ones are good, too. Yeah. Mike yeah. and yikes. <laughs> you two are doing a two-step around each other's choices. <laughs> My number three, Butterfinger Bites. Oh, I knew that was coming. Right. I knew Butterfinger on the list in some poll yep. was coming. Butterfinger Bugger, Bites. Bu- Buggerfinger. Bugger Butterfinger fingers. Bites. Like we, like we talked about in the Butterfinger one, they're the perfect kind of size. Well, Butterfinger BBs were. Yeah. But they're a good size to not oh, get yeah. too stuck in your teeth. Yeah. And you can pop them in endlessly. And they, they maintain that taste and yeah. everything of a, a fool Butterfinger. They don't change the taste. Yeah, yeah they, the, the taste of a fool. Yeah. <laughs> My number three, Sour Patch Kids, but the mix. Not just the watermelon. Oh, oh okay. Standard Sour Standard Patch pack, Kids. Yeah. Okay. Number three, watermelon Sour Patch oh, Kids. Oh, my God. Two, this two, I don't want to be a part of this two-step. <laughs> wow. wow. We got to go to the movies together. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah. Reach into your bucket, reach into mine. <laughs> yes, you're the perfect movie buddies. <laughs> and then you reach into my bucket and you don't want to know what's in there. Uh, snow caps. And- I will tell you it's not melting. <laughs> okay, number two. And this will shock you. 
peanut M and M's is wow. my number two. Why is that? Is my, you'll see. You'll hear what my number one is. But peanut M and M's is my number two. Oh. A great movie theater candy. My number two is also peanut M and M's. Okay, we're two stepping. <laughs> we're going to the movies. Together. And we all we all had peanut M and M's on the list. We, yeah. Of course, it's yeah. one of the perfect hollow. Or, I call it, the yeah. first, hollow uh, movie candies. When you go to the movie to see John Carpenter's Halloween, the perfect candy <laughs> yeah. is. That's what when we've been asking. Would you be excited to get this on Halloween? We meant while you're watching well, Halloween. Yeah, Halloween, the film Halloween. What about you? What's number your? two, nerd gummy clusters. Yeah, okay. those are really good. That's a good choice. You really got good. your crunchy. You got your chewy. You yeah, got your fruity. fruity. That's a great choice. Okay, so my number. Number one, and this is a shock. Mm-hmm. Bunch of crunch. Bunch of crunch. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll take it back. That was a shock. That Greg called it bunch of crunch. It takes me a minute to like bring that up in my mind. It's a cluster of of crunch bar. It's like clusters of crunch oh, bar. Okay, I think they are the perfect movie mm. candy because they're crunchy, like you get with the nerds cluster. But it's chocolate for me, and it's bites. So they're like that big, so you can just shake them out, throw them in. They, I, it's the perfect thing for me. It's they're really good. I thought the guy that you knew that worked at the place would said bunch of cunch, but he said cunch bar. <laughs> no, 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 no. Yeah, the, he said this guy in high school who had a, a underbite. Yeah. Uh, I don't know why this became the joke, but the joke became that I owed him a crunch bar. So whenever I'd see him, <laughs> and he pronounced it with his underbite, he'd say, Daniel, where's my crunch? <laughs> and that's how he would always say. And then I hadn't seen him in years. And I went to this restaurant and I, you, you order at the counter and he popped up from the behind the counter and said, where's my crunch? Without hesitation? Without hesitation. Wow. It had been like three, four years since wow. I had last seen him. Did you recognize him? Oh, oh that yeah. underbite? <laughs> <laughs> wow. But in my head, I don't know why I remembered it as bunch of crunch. Where's my bunch <laughs> of crunch? <laughs> where's my bunch of crunch? Where's my crunch? <laughs> my number one, Raisinets. Wow, number that's, one. That's a good movie snack. Yeah, fuck. I didn't My problem with that is that I'm not a huge fan of them just because I'm kind of sick of raisins. What? That's huh? brutal, dude. I've, They're not raisins. They're raisinets. <laughs> <laughs> There's a difference. Oh, it's the daughters of the raisins. <laughs> if you dipped those in Ghirardelli chocolate, Whoa. Woo! Like they would elevate. They would yeah. levitate off the ground. And yeah. instead of a raisin, it was just nothing. <laughs> Uh, my number one should not come as a shock at all. Wait, wait, wait. Let me guess. Let me guess. Sweet tarts. Popcorn. Ah, <laughs> did you really put popcorn? No, no, no. But I made popcorn over candy guy at a movie yeah, okay, yeah, to yeah, begin yeah. with. But number one, red vines. Oh, oh of course. Of course, vines. of course, of course. Mm. Yes, red vines. Uh, red vines. Red vines. Raisinets would have made the list. I just didn't think of it. It probably would have replaced M&M's. I, I will be. Ooh, come on now. I will be in line. I'm, be, I'm gonna get Sour Patch Kids. I'm gonna get Sour Patch Kids, and I'm thinking I'm rehearsing it. I'm, I'm planning for any like second <laughs> questions. Yeah, and I get there, and I'll see as I'm walking by Raisinets, and I'll be like Raisinets, yeah. <laughs> and I'll just end up with Raisinets. Uh, have you seen the ever seen the Raisinets perform at Radio City Music Hall? The legs on those things. <laughs> I think we'd make. A, well, I wouldn't want to eat your red vines. Wait, well, yours was Raisinets. Mm-hmm. Look, this is kind of good though. If we all went to a movie together, we wouldn't. We got the spectrum. Yeah, but we wouldn't want to eat each other's candy. We wouldn't, we wouldn't want to eat oh, each other's number, number ones. Well, yeah, I mean, you might want his red vines. I might nibble on your raisinets. Yeah, okay. I would take a couple red vines. Right. Yeah. Well, you can keep doing this two step. And I think I there's going to be a lot more like uh, yeah, this, this, way, this yeah. way than this way. Yeah. Give me like cho- chocolate. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I'll be in the back of the theater with a big bucket of popcorn <laughs> on my lap. <laughs> then I'll be right there. Waiting for it. Anybody is next to me. Going ow, 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 ow. Uh, <laughs> Googling UTIs. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that's our, that's our uh, Garadelli episode strongest episode strongest ever maybe yep. i mean Bowelful. in terms of quality no uh, on our part no oh yeah, We're, yeah we certainly aren't the garadelli of podcast no. hosts, but the, the garadelli candy was very good yeah mm-hmm. between this and ferrari rocher i think we pretty pretty edge. oh no, I mean, no 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 because the varieties of the ferrero rocher were not as good as the varieties of garadelli you're were. absolutely right you got me there yeah yeah i think the the ferreros have really good flavor but i think the chocolate quality is better here yeah i would rather have any variety of uh garadelli than one of the varieties of Ferrero yeah, Rocher. Yeah. This episode is sponsored by Ferrero Rocher. <laughs> <laughs> oh, now a word from our sponsor. <laughs> Hi. Do you live west of the Mississippi? <laughs> 
said, do you have sandwich needs? <laughs> uh, so our plug for this week, I'm going to say, leave us a review on Apple Podcasts. Yeah, oh, that'd be great. Even if you don't have, if you don't listen to your podcast via Apple Podcasts, if mm-hmm. you have an iPhone, you can just open that mm-hmm. app and leave us a review. Oh, that, you wow. don't even have to leave a review. Just press five stars. That's all you got to press. Yeah, yeah. It's just five stars. What's it to you? You've got a billion stars. I know. You got infinite stars. Got infinite Let us stars. have five of your Come infinite. on, God. <laughs> <laughs> and also anyone else make it, your family make them do it because the more ratings we get the more it looks like we're a legitimate podcast <laughs> to people and people say oh this isn't just uh, three people who made their family leaves reviews mm-hmm. <laughs> it'll make people give us more of a chance because that is kind of clout in a crowded podcast yeah. market so it really helps us a lot if and you yeah. do that the more you support us the more content we can provide for you the yep. more you support us, the more we can just eat chocolate while yeah. you don't get any of it. <laughs> Imagine, listener, a new episode every day. Oh, every my day. God. <laughs> Imagine, listener, our cadmium levels. <laughs> through through the room. <laughs> dentist on site. Yeah. We, we have like an oncologist and a dentist here because we are not doing good because we're so successful. We'll see you in. Well, I'll see you down in Garadelli Square. Yep. yep. Have a square day. Yeah. Have half of a good day. Half of a good day. Yeah. Have a San Francisco treat for us. But this one, not the rice aroni. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh my God, the trolley! <laughs> <laughs> and ends with us being crushed. <laughs>